Hello, everyone, and welcome into another episode of the Big Blue News Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Beesmore, and today I am jo- I am joined by Nolan Fleming, who's a part of the Amateur Statistics Scholars. Do you want to tell uh, tell everybody about yourself real quick before we get into it? Yeah, a uh, good job with the name, by the way. I've, I'm never good at it, and it's, it's my own show. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, I'm from Amateur Statistics Scholars, uh, the podcast. Uh, you can find us on Instagram at Amateur Statistics Scholars, or you can find us anywhere on podcasts. So, yeah, that's pretty much all that you really need to know about me without getting into any more specifics. Uh, No, let's get into the podcast, I guess. I mean, we're going to talk about tonight with Antonio Reeves returning, along with Kentucky potentially adding Santo Cyril, and then if Trey Mitchell from West Virginia, if he does, you know, enter the transfer portal, UK could pendip- could potentially get him as well but let's start out tonight with you know Antonio Reeves finally announcing he's going to be returning what did he think about that I mean it came out of nowhere well yeah it came out of nowhere but I think it also ended up probably being the most crucial moment of the offseason for Kentucky because let's just be honest the the offseason up to this point has kind of been a disaster Mm -hmm. you've had pretty much everybody transfer out if they did not enter the if they did not enter the draft you know Mm -hmm. Chibwe Livingston and Wallace, but, you know, losing – somehow I never thought losing Lance Ware in the transfer portal would yeah. end up being a really big deal, but it is, it's probably – right now it, it caused a bit of a hole in the roster, and uh, same for C.J. Frederick, obviously, mm-hmm. and just – I it, it was – it would have been really bad had mm-hmm. Reeves transferred. I think it had been a very bad look for Cal. Uh, big Cal fan, don't get me wrong, but, like mm-hmm. – I think if you lose him and then you can't add anybody else, you lost an entire piece. That it, that probably was the most important piece of last mm-hmm. year's team. And I, agree. I think will end up being the most important piece of this year's team, potentially. Yeah. I mean, like you said, um, if UK lost Antonio Reeves, they would have lost nine players to either the draft or to the transfer portal. Lost Casey Wallace, Jacob Toppin, Oscar Shebway, Chris Livingston, Sapir Wheeler, CJ Frederick, you know, the list goes on, Damian Collins and Lance Square and <laughs> and also with uh, you know, uh with Aaron Bradshaw being injured right now, it would be key to, you know, have, you know, Lance Square back specifically. Yeah, I, what's scary is I totally forgot about a lot of those transfers. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, especially Wheeler, even though I mean, how can you forget about Wheeler? I mean yeah. That was such a messy situation in its own right. But, mm-hmm. um, yeah, like you said with even Bradshaw, like, I'm I'm not a big conspiracy theorist or anything, <laughs> don't get me wrong, but, like, I can understand why there is a lot of skepticism but whether or not he'll play this year because, mm-hmm. you know, we've gone through it with Jared Vanderbilt under Cal, Shaden Sharp, obviously, we're still – we're all still very sore after that, I think. <laughs> yeah. And I don't think it's going to get any better anytime soon. So I I think a lot of people are currently in the mindset of when Bradshaw steps on the court and he actually plays is mm-hmm. when they'll believe that he's going to play. Yeah, and if you listen to uh, Jack Pilgrim today on his Sources Say podcast, um, he hasn't been, he hasn't heard that confirmed from the UK's side, but right now he expects that Aaron Bradshaw will return by September or October. So hopefully that's true. Hopefully he'll actually get some playing time. Um, it'll be interesting to see though how Kentucky does in Canada, you know, in one more month for sure. That's gonna be wild too. Imagine if we took the roster that we had like even a week ago to Canada. Like that would have been weird. Yeah, it would have been weird. You would have only had one big man with Uganda Oyen. So but let's get a little bit back to Antonio Reeves. I mean, today I got it confirmed by Kentucky. Um, by the university itself saying he's back on campus and enrolled in class uh and uh enrolled in classes um he averaged 14.4 points per game shot nearly 40 percent from three also had 37 points against Ar- arkansas whenever you know none of the players were playing like none of the yeah, who can ever. forget yeah i mean i remember i was back in bowling green western was where i went to college i was just seeing some of my old friends and I was watching that game. I'm like, Antonio Reeves is him. <laughs> yeah, I was in Dayton, Ohio, watching the whole thing on my phone. Mm-hmm. So, but, you know, it was worth it. Yeah, and I think getting Antonio Reeves was the biggest key for this offseason. Like I said, UK, granted, yeah, they've added two three-star players, you know, to the team with Jordan Burks um, and then 
who was the other player? I'm Joey blanking. Hart. Yeah, Joey Hart. I'm blanking right now. But yeah, <laughs> adding two three stars to the roster, a lot of fans were like, why are we getting excited over, you know, two three star players coming to the roster? And then finally, you know, adding Antonio Reeves, a lot of people, a lot of fans are actually now excited for this upcoming year. UK actually now has 10 players on their roster, which is surprising because compared to like two weeks ago, he only has seven. Yeah, and I think that's the thing too is that even like three days ago, Joey Hart would have ended up having very real playing time. I mean, mm -hmm. he could still, but like I would expect that he's going to end up being more of a guy to come in maybe two or three minute spurts. Mm -hmm. Kind of like a Duthiero maybe last year, mm -hmm. if that. Maybe even more like a Derek Willis type before he actually started playing. But um, Burks is still interesting to me because I still want, I still think he's going to get playing time. I know he's a three-star or whatever, but he was really good in overtime elite. Yeah, I think he'll get playing time too. I mean, I think he's more of a four-star in, instead of a three-star. Like, I think you're right, yeah. Yeah, I think the main thing is just his attitude from – what I was told from or from just listening to Jack Pilgrim's podcast is just, you know, his attitude, making sure he, you know, is fun on the court, off the court as well. I mean, DeMarcus right. Cousins, you know, like a lot of people had problems with DeMarcus Cousins while he was on the court. But, you know, it's all about his attitude. And I think if he can keep his attitude in check, he could easily, you know, be great this upcoming year be, uh, behind Justin Edwards. Yeah, because, I mean, I think he also is going to be brought in to kind of fill the Chris Livingston size hole in yeah. the roster too, because he's kind of he will be more of a defensive mm -hmm. type of you know slasher. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean UK missed out on Keyshawn Johnson. Uh, this yep. Past, um, he went to Arizona. Of course, he transferred from uh San Diego State. A lot, a lot of people were like we need to get him to replace Chris Livingston. Obviously, he didn't have the flashing numbers to you know, put up a lot of points, but mm -hmm. obviously it was obviously would have been nice to get Keyshawn, but I'm glad we got Jordan Burks. I think, like I said, he'll be great to replace Chris Livingston, hopefully this upcoming year. Yeah, I think I think he will do a good job. I, th I think he's a good player. Um, I do Thierro too, though. I mean, people are still, I don't think, understand. He's going to get a lot of playing time, I think, this year too. Another yeah. three-star, four-star guy from mm -hmm. a couple of years ago. I think even with Bradshaw, with Bradshaw potentially being out at the beginning of the season, I know you said September, but with him potentially, like if if all things go, you know, if something maybe goes a little weird there and he isn't back for the very beginning of the year, there's a real possibility he's starting at the four or the yeah. or the three or whatever. Yeah, I could definitely see I do Fierro starting at the four. I mean, if you saw the photo the other day with him and Joey Hart. Like he made Joey Hart look like a kid, dude. It was insane. Yeah, he's a lot taller than he was even last year. Yeah, and also just big, muscular. It's insane. Yeah, he's had a, he had quite the transformation. I think. Yeah, but but I, back to Reeves, what you were talking about though, like I think the thing that is really, I I think that has me like thinking more is like whether or not is Reeves gonna start mm -hmm. this year? Because honestly. I would assume that that was a part of him coming back was that he was going to get a lot of playing time because I, I'm I'm pr I'm sure mm -hmm. that he was a little butt hurt or something last year whenever it took Cal so long to mm -hmm. actually play him. I mean, come on, who wouldn't be when you eventually yeah. go out and score thirty seven? Yeah, thirty seven. So yeah, yeah, I just wonder if he is the if they do put him in the starting rotation and if they do, does that mean Dillingham's your sixth man? I think. In my honest opinion, I see him probably starting at the very beginning of the year, but come mid of season, come November or December, he'll be the sixth man coming off the bench, and you'll have Rob Dillingham at the shooting guard. That's my opinion. Obviously, I don't know anything about that, but I think to start out, I think you need that veteran leadership, have Antonio Reeves definitely starting at the very beginning of the year. I mean, yeah, I would think that would be a – fair assessment because like i know cal doesn't promise anything but i i think we were so desperate at, at a point where you kind of just need him i mean if you have to promise him a starting position then you just yeah. need to give him the starting position yeah and like i said i don't think coach cal probably promised him anything because he always tells you know high school recruits right recruits, you know i can't promise <laughs> you'll start but i can promise you you will get playing time basically 
Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm sure. I, I'm 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 on board with you though. Um, no, it's so weird though. Like it is a totally different team than we thought it would be. And uh, I mean, I'm I'm hyped for it. I'm pumped for it. I think they're gonna be good. Don't get me mm-hmm. wrong. I I do think it's gonna be a lot like we're all used to with Cal, where oh, it's taking them some time. Uh, mm-hmm. we're young, and mm-hmm. then not really know what's happening yet. <laughs> and maybe we get to about January, and yeah. then we start picking up the pace a little bit. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I'm just nervous about having seven freshmen on this year's team. Obviously, Coach Cal, he's had major success with, you know, freshmen in years past. And I'm just nervous about that. Seven freshmen, uh, yeah. two sophomores, and then obviously one upperclassman and Antonio Reeves. Yeah, that's probably how it's going to be a stay, because then if you get – if you do get Sompto Surreal, then that does – he's supposed to be a senior in high school, so, like, you're not getting any older in that in that case. But if you get Trey Mitchell, obviously, then, mm-hmm. you know, that's one more upperclassman. He'll get, I wonder what happens with him, too. I mean, I, I, if we get him or not, it's a different story. But if he were to come to Kentucky uh-huh. – obviously, he's not in the portal yet. But if he were to come to Kentucky, mm-hmm. I just wonder where he'd play because – was he a starter at West Virginia? I think he was. Um, he, I mean, this past year he averaged uh almost twelve points per game, five and a half rebounds, and two assists. So if he was a starter, then he was putting up starter like numbers. Yeah, kind of like Reeves, I guess. But that's the one. That's one thing I would question with that. Uh, mm-hmm. he could he could end up here though. I mean, like you said, there has been a lot of talk about him, and uh, yeah. it's gonna be interesting to see. Yeah, I mean, I think he would probably be a backup to Aaron Bradshaw. Because, you know, Clutch, they want Aaron Bradshaw at the four. They don't want him at the five. No, they do not. For some reason. So, I think that's also a hold up with UK and him playing. I don't think it's mainly Aaron Bradshaw. I think it's more Clutch trying to say, hey, we want him at the four, not the five, you know. And that's one of the reasons why they were so upset this past year with Chris Livingston. They kept saying, he's a guard, he's a guard, you know. And then UK kept playing him at the four position. I just wonder how much longer Cal ends up dealing with Clutch is what I wonder. I'm sure he'll – if you have to deal with them and get in the top talent, I'm sure he'll do it. Yeah. But the, there comes a point, too, with these guys where it's, it does feel like, you know, just, just from the fan perspective, for anyone that doesn't know, I am not a Kentucky insider. I mean, you're way more of an insider than me. But <laughs> uh, from a fan perspective, though, it has it is frustrating, and I'm sure for Cal it has to be frustrating too, because like here you are with this top notch talent mm-hmm. who could be end up being one of the top picks in the NBA draft if he mm-hmm. you know if he plays to the, his potential, and then you potentially are getting a holdout from him. I mean, injury is different. Don't get me wrong, yeah. but like if it is a holdout, which I highly doubt it is, I just yeah. want to be straight about that. I highly, I, I do not think Aaron Bradshaw to be a liar. I think he is obviously very truthful, but you know, there is potential for clutch to maybe interfere and be like, yeah. Oh, he can't play yet. We don't want you to hurt yourself any worse. Yeah. So I, uh, I can understand why there's a lot of frustration. I mean, I remember a month ago I saw all over Twitter. Like I woke up, like I worked a different shift than I am currently. Like, I got to work around 5 a.m., and then I get on my Twitter, and then I see all this news about, like, a month ago saying Aaron Bradshaw has, like, a foot-slash-ankle injury. I'm like, is right. this really true? I'm thinking to myself, is this really true? I didn't report about it because, obviously, there was no confirmed source at the time saying, like, he's injured, you know, he's in a boot. Like, nobody could confirm that until – last Friday, this past Friday, and then people finally confirmed it, and it was literally everywhere on Twitter, and I'm thinking to myself, oh, no. <laughs> it's so weird, though, because isn't the Aaron Bradshaw experience off to just a great start? Not only with this, you also have the USC stuff with Dickinson committed here. Like, it has been rocky already. Like, everyone was already so scared about him leaving. Yeah, with with him going to USC, you're not wrong. And I remember whenever I reported about that rumor, everybody was like, why would he transfer? And it's more like it wasn't him that wants to transfer. It's more, you know, his agency clutch. 
Right. And then there were also the people who were like, well, he can't do that. Yeah, he can. You, you can get out of an N- NLI. Yeah. It's so weird. The NIL, NLI. You can yeah. always get out of a national letter. You can always get out of a letter of intent. Yeah, it's so, very like, easy to do so. And also, it's now easy for players to transfer, you know, anywhere. <laughs> right. It feels like. But, uh, yeah. but yeah, but yeah, let's talk a little bit about more uh, Santos Arreo. Um, obviously, he's right now in the class of 2024. And from what I've read from Jack Pilgrim, um, right now, he graduated in May. But the holdup for him committing to Kentucky right now is... He hasn't gotten all his credits finished right now, like for high school. Yeah, that's always important. That's a pretty important <laughs> step to finishing high school. Um, yeah. that explains it though. That def- that definitely explains it because I would I think I'm like a lot of people. I would have thought he would have committed already because you know all the pictures of him, the players reposting the pictures of him in the UK stuff. I think that's a pretty good sign that uh, yeah. he obviously wants to be here and the players want him to be here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and right now, from what Jack Pilgrim said, is he is supposed to be done with his classes by July, and then is expected to commit by August, and hopefully be on campus by then. So he would definitely miss, you know, the trip to Canada right. this upcoming summer. So that definitely means that we're going to be down to one big. Yeah, one big with a uh, Ugano and so we're going to have Ugo, and that means that the four who plays at the four is that going to be Edwards. Uh, you could put Edwards in, or you could put in. Uh, you could also put in. Uh, I do. Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. You could, I guess, do that. Oh, that's gonna be so yes. weird. Yeah, my all mind I is know. gonna melt. Yeah, all I know is having one big next month in Canada. Whew, might not be good. Yeah, uh, that's gonna be strange. Uh, I have no idea what happens there. We yeah, might get but- killed. Yeah, we might be killed, but also having, you know, Antonio back, he'll also help us to, you know, keep keep UK in the games, hopefully. I mean, everybody, right. everybody last summer, like, everybody was calling him Antonio Threes whenever he was in the Bahamas. It was insane. Oh, yeah, that was a fun times, dude. If only we knew what was going to happen potentially with that team. Yeah. I mean, I... I mean, Antonio Reeves, like you said earlier, he didn't even start like the very beginning of, beginning of the year. They had CJ Frederick over him, and now right. He's gone. But yeah, it'll be interesting to see how UK does, you know, next month because, like I said, now you have at least ten players on the roster. I mean, you have a full ten man team finally, and then if you count Brendan, right. uh, that's eleven. So at least you have a team that can. You know, play five on five minus, you know, Aaron Bradshaw speaking. <laughs> <laughs> we just need to make sure that Brennan Canada gets on the court in Canada is what we need to make sure happens oh, yeah. as agree. a fan base. I agree with we that for to, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We need to we need to really advocate for that. Yeah. But I'm excited for Canada though, because I cannot wait to see Edwards and Wagner both on the court together. Yeah. I have a feeling that could be an all timer there when it comes to two headed monsters because yeah. Both of those guys could be the number one pick in the draft if you ask me next year. Yeah, and I'm really excited to see what Justin Edwards can do. I mean, just his versatility, three and D, can score, can defend. I'm just excited to see that for sure. I watched so much of him in high school, though. He was just – he is a fantastic player. We are very lucky to have him at Kentucky, and I feel like he's going to – I think he's going to turn a lot of heads. I think the same goes for Wagner. Mm-hmm. Bradshaw plays. I think that could be the case for him too. I think all the freshmen mm-hmm. are going to have real, even Reed Shepard, I think, are going to yeah. have real opportunities and potential yeah. to really just open up some eyes. Yeah, I could see Reed Shepard easily playing at least 10 or 15 minutes a game, even maybe more 20 or 25. And like you said earlier, I mean, UK almost lost out on Justin Edwards. He almost ended up in. Ended up at Tennessee. I'm so glad Coach Cal, you know, took over that <laughs> recruitment. That would have been awful. I know. Could you imagine? Barnes. Yeah, I can you imagine seeing him play in Tennessee. E. That would be awful. Blue fits him a lot better. Yeah, and then all the rumors surrounded saying DJ Wagner is going to Louisville. <laughs> <laughs> that was so weird, too. They, they were convinced is what was the funniest part of that. They knew it was happening. Well, I, I was convinced, too, for like a month, and now I'm like, no, he's a cat. <laughs> yeah, I was, too. The, you know, Jack Pilgrim comes in and saves the day. Mm-hmm. Makes us all feel better about things, so, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
But uh, yeah, let's talk a little bit more. UK could also, you know, add uh Trey Mitchell from WVU because of the whole situation that happened with, you know, Bob Higgins and him resigning this past weekend, which, you know, that whole story was something crazy. Yeah. Huggy but, uh, Bear really messed up. Yeah, you're not wrong, but uh but yeah, Trey Mitchell, he's a uh six nine four, like I said earlier, averaged twelve points. Five and a half rebounds and two assists. I mean, that would be a great ad. He would probably replace, you know, Oscar Sheway. Obviously, not as great as Oscar Sheway, but you know, same height as him. Was right. able to get rebounds, and I think it would be a great addition. I think he would too. Which then again, for some reason, if they get him, I think a lot of people are going to be convinced that Bradshaw's not playing. I know everything keeps coming back to Bradshaw. Yeah. But that's just where everyone's minds are right now. Because you know we always think worst case scenario here at BBN, but uh, yeah, you're not wrong. I think... <laughs> you know, Jared Vanderbilt and Shaden Sharp is worst case scenario. <laughs> I think, uh, but I think he, if something were to happen there though, and he did need to replace Bradshaw, I think he would be more than worthy for it because he mm-hmm. is a good player. Um, yeah. So yeah, I, it's pretty much if they even if they do get him and Bradshaw. I still think I look. I like Ugo. I think he uh-huh. could be really good. He's got potential. But if something happens there and he does, like, because I, I mean, I'm I, we're all clueless about Ugo right now. So mm-hmm. if something did happen there and he did underperform to the magnitude that a lot of people think he could, then you'd have a contingency plan where you could put Bradshaw at the five and bring in Mitchell to be the four or something like I. You just spitballing here. <laughs> it probably won't happen. No, I think Calipari is salivating at the idea that he's going to have two seven footers down low. Yeah, but don't it's... get me wrong. I think it'd be cool too. Just n- n- no shots go in because you, they're just getting swatted back in their face. Yeah, yeah. It'll be interesting though if Trey Mitchell does enter the transfer portal. I think it would be the last addition UK needs for their roster because. Easily, you could have Hugo at the five, Trey Mitchell at the four, Edwards obviously at the three, and then either Reeves or uh, I'm blanking. Why am I blanking tonight? Yeah, Rob Dillingham. I'm blanking tonight. (laughs) Probably just because it's been a long day at work. But yeah, Rob Dillingham and then DJ Wagner at the one. I mean, it would be a great – I think it would be a great starting five for sure. I think it would too. And Kentucky needs more – Kentucky also just needs more help down low, and I think Mitchell will provide for that. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I think, um, I think, I think it'd be a win-win uh, if you get him, even if he doesn't start. Mm-hmm. So, I think he'd be very po- important addition, and then also throw in uh, Santo Cyril. I think, yeah, I just think it's what I think it'd be very, very good, good scenario for Kentucky. Yeah, and obviously, we're not confirming Trey Mitchell if. If he has hit the transfer portal because he hasn't, he's still at WVU. Um, I don't know if he will hit the transfer portal. He could potentially, you know, hit it, but I don't know. We'll see about that though. Yeah, uh, yeah. Do Sorry, you know? I was just, I had to check something on my phone. <laughs> oh, it's all good. Let's talk a little bit though about the NBA draft that is happening tomorrow night, real quick, and then. We'll probably end this podcast. I appreciate you coming on. But tomorrow night, NBA draft, who do you think will get drafted from Kentucky? Well, first of all, thank, thanks for having me on. It, it's mm-hmm. nice to feel important. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you've been on our podcast, so, yeah. you know, can't help but return the favor to you. <laughs> um, obviously, Wallace gets drafted where? I don't know. Uh there's a lot of now there's some some mock drafts out there that have him as high as about seven or eight even Mm -hmm. six in some scenarios Mm -hmm. i think it's going to be more like a probably 13 or 14 maybe 15 i was if he's available if he's available for atlanta they will draft him yeah i I was thinking like late lottery to like middle of the first round i'm thinking anywhere between like the 14th through like the 20th pick in my opinion obviously Dude, you've seen how UK guards perform in the NBA, like with players who have been drafted really late in the first round. I mean, Tyrese Max got drafted late in the first round, and you see how he's done. Yeah, I, I agree. And um, he just feels a lot like Maxi, though, mm-hmm. coming into the draft. Is Maxi? He was Maxi was good at Kentucky, 
but you didn't ever really feel like he really got to show off his full potential, like his actual talents. I just think I even from like even just think about his three point shot. Maxi is good is great from three now in the NBA. But at Kentucky, he was good from three, but he was yeah. kind of like Wallace, where he went from about February on. He was not really knocking it down. Uh, yeah. And there's a I lot just, of similarities. Yeah. And I just looked it up. He uh he was drafted 21st in that NBA draft. I recently right. So and he was projected about exactly the same as Wallace is. So there's yeah. a lot of similarities between the two. Um, Wallace has the assets, I think, and he has the skills or he has the skill sets to be a really good NBA player. If you ask mm-hmm. me, uh, he, he he pretty much fit anywhere, mm-hmm. any team, any organization that drafts him. He could be he probably won't be a day one starter, but he will definitely be like Maxi to where he yeah. will. De- I think he will work his way up there. Yeah, and I agree with you on that. I think I think he. And probably Chris Livingston are going to be the only two players drafted in this year's draft from Kentucky. Obviously, I wish Oscar Sheboy the best of luck, Jacob Top, and you know, getting <laughs> drafted. But I think, in my opinion, there's probably only going to be two players this year getting drafted from Kentucky. I think Sheboy gets drafted really late, like 50 something, where like the Brandon Boston, you know, 53, 54, or whatever. Mm-hmm. I think he gets drafted really late, and I think Livingston also gets drafted. Livingston's going to be a Los Angeles Laker. It's pretty <laughs> obvious. <laughs> uh, yeah, they, they. I have a feeling that those rumors are true. That they definitely have. I have probably given him a promise or promised him a spot, like because you know he is really close with LeBron. So. Yeah. I, mean, I, I am pretty I am sure that that is that is the case. I mean, Chris Livingston was also in that movie Shooting Stars, you know, the remake of I forgot all about that. He is in that, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, I haven't even seen that yet. Neither have I. I want to go see it just like I went to watch White Men Can't Jump, you know, with the sequel with, you know, Jack I forgot Hall. they made that too. Yeah, I need to watch that. Yeah, I need to, you know, catch up on movies and everything. I would love to, you know. Watch There's both. so much to watch right now, dude. You got the new Flash, Transformers, Indiana Jones comes out, and like whenever <laughs> it does, like dude, they got a lot coming out right now. Yeah, I hear you, but yeah, I think like I said, I'm excited for tomorrow's NBA draft. But I think only two players will get drafted. I think obviously Jacob Toppin and uh, Oscar Sheboy will get picked up more than likely. You know. Yeah, Toppin definitely will. He's too athletic. I think. Yeah, I don't. I don't honestly. I love Jacob Toppin, but I don't think he's going to end up being a uh, really being on an NBA team. If you ask me, I think he'll be either in the G League or he'll just go go overseas. Yeah, which is perfectly fine. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. You can make good money doing yeah. that. Yeah, not the G League, but overseas. Yeah. Did you know his older brother is Obi Toppin, who plays? I know the they'll team. they're gonna they're gonna talk all about that if he does get drafted. Yeah, I mean. Maybe Jacob Toppin ends up signing with the New York Knicks, bro. <laughs> Maybe. Willie Collie Stein was a wide receiver. Devin Askew is supposed to be a senior in high school. Ashton Hagens is the same thing. Yeah, they let they Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. But yeah. I I wish though everybody the best of luck tomorrow. And like I said, hopefully all four players get drafted. I just don't see it happening. Yeah, in an ideal world it does. It would be it would be pretty great though. Yeah, but I think that's all I have for tonight's podcast. I appreciate you all listening, and I appreciate you also coming on to this podcast, and hopefully I'll have you on here a lot more, and maybe you could potentially (laughs) become my co-host, bro. (laughs) We're going to see, man. We're going to have to see. I just hit that. That was great. Uh, Yeah, no, thanks for having me. I loved it. Yeah, do you have anything else you would like to add? Uh, guess follow us on Amateur Statistics Scholars on Instagram and go check us out. That's pretty much all I got. Just put in the shameless plug. Yeah, uh, always give that shameless plug, you know. And then also follow me on social media if you haven't. It is C More Sports on Twitter, Chris More underscore sports on Instagram. But that's all I have for tonight's podcast. Like I said, hopefully all four players get drafted tomorrow. Excited about Reeves, you know, being back and. I guess that's the end of the podcast. Thank you all for watching.